Good morning, this is Civil Engineering Notes, and for today, we are going to discuss part 1 of the Building Construction Handbook titled Built Environment. So why is built environment important? It is important for us civil engineers because it touches all aspects of our lives, encompassing the buildings we live in, the distribution systems that provide us with water and electricity, and the roads, bridges, and transportation systems we use to get from place to place. In summary, a built environment is developed in order to satisfy residents' requirements. Human needs can be physiological or social and are related to security, respect, and self-expression. On the slide, environment is the surroundings which can be natural, man-made, or combination of these. Built environment is created by man with or without the aid of natural environment. The term natural environment refers to the non-human made surroundings and conditions in which all living and non-living things exist on earth. The common concept of the natural environment encompasses two different components. One is ecological units that operate as natural systems such as soil and vegetation, and two, universal natural resources such as air and water. We can see from the illustration some of the elements of the natural environment grasses and wildflowers, waterways and lakes, shrubs and bushes, deciduous and coniferous trees, rock outcrops. From this illustration, we can see some of the examples of the elements of the built environment are external, the buildings, retaining walls, paved areas, rockeries, planted areas, pools and ponds, and trees and shrubs. The natural environment is in contrast with the built environment which refers to areas that have been fundamentally transformed and influenced by human activity, such as cities, towns, infrastructure, and so on. Environmental modeling involves the application of multidisciplinary knowledge to explain, explore, and predict the Earth's response to environmental change, both natural and human-induced. Construction plays a central role in transforming the natural environment into the built environment, and there are many considerations and restrictions that can apply before a project is given permission to proceed in terms of how it may influence the environment. From the illustration, we can see some of the examples of the internal elements of the built environment. We have the indoor plant cultivation, daylight ventilation and vision out, artificial light, texture and color of internal finishes, eternal space heating, circulation space, and furnitures. Environmental awareness is important also in construction. Environmental issues are of a great importance, especially to those who work within the construction and built environment. Construction projects around the world are having a significant impact on our environment, on our own or a local global scale. Each stage of the construction process has a measurable impact. Regardless of the location, size, or purpose of your construction project, environmental impacts are inevitable. They run the risk of affecting nature, the built environment, and your surrounding neighbors. Impacts can range from noise to pollution, wildlife to flora and fauna. On this slide, we are listing 10 environmental considerations before construction. 1. Planning requirements. 2. Building regulations. 3. Land restrictions by vendor or leaser. 4. Availability of services. 5. Local amenities including transport. 6. Subsoil conditions. 7. Levels and topography of land. 8. Adjoining buildings or land. 9. Use of building. 10. Daylight and view aspects. On the drawing, you can see the designer checking the area and locating where the gales, cold winds, and mild winds direct the building. As designers, we should also be knowledgeable on the standard sizes of rooms, especially on residential and commercial buildings. Knowledge of standard size of rooms and their location in a residential building is important for planning of residential construction project. The room sizes and their location provide spaces for movement, sunlight, and natural air for residents. On the drawings, we have to consider rooms for the houses like the entrance bathroom, studios, dining and kitchen areas, rest areas, lounge, etc. For schools, we have the studios, laboratories, art rooms, handicraft rooms, workshops, library, classrooms, staff rooms, and offices. 
For factories, we should also consider the workshops, machine shops, storage areas, light assembly work, and similar activities. Offices. For the hospitals, we have operating theaters, wards, solariums, and offices. We also have physical considerations. 1. Natural contours of land. 2. Natural vegetation and trees. 3. Size of land and or proposed building. 4. Shape of land and or proposed building. 5. Approach and access roads and footpaths. 6. Services available. 7. Natural waterways, lakes, and ponds. 8. Restrictions such as the rise of a way, tree preservation, and ancient buildings. 9. Climatic conditions created by surrounding properties, land, or activities. 10. Proposed future developments. To note, the physical environment within which a construction project is cited may impact considerably on its development as construction projects are always affected by physical influences. The geographical location of a project, ground conditions, and weather patterns are the most common examples of physical influences. These are some examples. The split level construction to form economic shape, shape determined by existing trees, plateau or high ground solution giving dry site conditions on sloping sites, step elevation or similar treatment to blend with the natural environment. This ends our topic with the built environment. This is from the Building Construction Handbook and this is Civil Engineering Notes. See you soon!